it's Jennifer Vatza here, Belladonna's Botanicals. Um, <clears throat> and I'm beginning, the spirit world has been very chatty lately. And I am, I, last night, um, I have been having a lot of trouble with my insomnia. So I've not been falling asleep until like, early for me falling asleep right now is 4 a.m. Um, the last couple nights has been like anywhere between 5 and 8 a.m. So, um, yeah. So this was um, last night. At some point before I, fe I fell asleep, um, I guess I was having a conversation with Beelzebub. Although I want, there's some interesting symbology and stuff I wrote on the top. So I'll, I'll read to you what it is. So, so basically what this is, is the circle is supposed to represent the earth and then the pent the pentagram. And then I have different locations uh, uh, ascribed to each one. So um, the one on the, over here on the, on my, on my top left is, it says Tunguska, Siberia. Um, the top right is the Barents Sea, which is like, north of russia like around finland and scan uh when that scandinavian kind of region um down the one on the lower right it says africa's fertile crescent the bottom point is the south pole and then this one on the far on the lower left i guess says australia towards india mariana's trench question mark so i i'm not entirely sure where I was going for with these particular locations uh, with the points of the pentagram because uh, then suddenly Beelzebub like started um, started to chime in and talk about some talk about a thing or two so um, a lot of my work with Beelzebub over the years and I he, he is he is not one that I work with that often but we usually end up talking about um Emotional pestilence, because uh, uh, Beelzebub is, you know, the Lord of Flies, the Lord of Pestilence, you know, depending on, you know, what grimoire or whatever you're, you're, what lore you are following around that. But usually associated with, you know, pestilence, disease, you know, destruction, that sort of thing. But so this is what Beelzebub had to say. The greatest, the greatest pestilence of humankind is that of emotional pestilence. Your emotions aren't physical by nature. You evoke, conjure, and command them into existence. Feeling pain, making pain, creating pain, devouring you every day and everything in its path. Emotional pest pestilence, it's hard to say, pestilence, uh, shall not be mistaken for diseases of the mind and the compounded trauma of existence. Emotional pestilence is, is the toxicity spilling forth day after day. There was a reason until now global, global communication was not possible, or at best, very slow. Whistles, people are people by Depeche Mode. I don't know why. I, I Sometimes I put little notes in there of, of little things that I noticed. That will come up later. Um, I think I'm supposed to look up the wor words to people are people by Depeche Mode, um, which is actually probably one of my favorite Depeche Mode songs, to be honest. Um, I remember when it was out. I was maybe about 10. I was 85, I think. Came out 85, 86, somewhere around there. But great song. Um, anyways, I'm just trying to, I, I'm trying to remember the lyrics like people are people you are another, another. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i don't know i can't I, I'm terrible at remembering lyrics some lyrics i remember I, i'm pretty sure i will know the lyrics to every rose has its thorn by poison until the day i die and that is just occupying brain space that could something else could live in for now but you know anyways but i digress back to beelzebub Emotional pestilence is energy waste management, overflowing toxic landfills and garbage dumps of the soul. You know of the living death that is coming. You saw it all before. We showed you once upon a time. Revisit the writings of the later, the late millennia. You have been afraid because you know of what is to come. That's interesting. I, this is the first time I'm reading this as well. So 
Anyways, so um, what Beelzebub is referring to there is I wrote a book of prophecy. I think I've talked about this occasionally um, in videos back in like 98, 1998, 99. But it was all stuff that was taking pep, pep taking um the time frame of it was after 2013 so it wasn't like the y2k hysteria or the 2012 hysteria it was all stuff that was taking you know kind of in this time frame in the time after 2013 so apparently i need to go find that it's in my closet so how does one okay so got to note that sometimes when you're channeling and getting messages from your spirits writing becomes a challenge um i do <laughs> i you know i'm trying to find the best way to do this because it, it's it's either writing's a challenge or i end up with audio uh files where i'm singing in other languages and it still doesn't make any sense to me so how does one heal manage or deal with emotional pestilence that must have been my question to him cures may vary but most will deny natural causes the best way the only way um start enjoy the silence words are so very unnecessary they can only do harm I, and then it, at which point i was like um beelzebub uh the patch moda question mark we come to your world to experience your existences, and sometimes humans make good shit, like the patch mode, bubblegum ice cream, and leg warmers. So you really like the 1980s then, Beelzebub? I'm trying to see what this last line says. Oh, laughs in bug chatter. <laughs> So that's where we ended up there with Beelzebub. And apparently, surprise, spoiler alert, Beelzebub likes Depeche Mode in the 1980s. Um, not typical. But anyways, I, I like that. We, we, we come to your world to, and experience your existences. And sometimes humans make good shit like Depeche Mode. Bubblegum ice cream. Damn, I haven't had that since probably the 80s. I used to love bubblegum ice cream when I was a kid. I had this whole method because I would get in the cone. And you know, like when you're when you have ice cream that has actual like, um, I don't know if you guys remember those, the little um uh, they were like in a, a sort of ball, like a little cylindrical like piece of gum. It wasn't like a stick of chewing gum or or whatever. So they had the little and it had a hard coating on it. So imagine like a peanut MM, but it was like gum. Um, what are they called gumballs? Maybe it was a gumball. Um, my historic candy knowledge is failing me at some point, but so you had that, and then there was a, this sort of bubblegum flavored ice cream. I don't know, it was something very, very sweet and almost flowery. But I'd always get it in a cone, and like it gets gross to get the to to like. So I learned how to like chew with different parts of my mouth. So it's like this was the cone chewing side, and this was the bubblegum chomp chomping side, and then you know the ice cream kind of went went down the middle, but. Anyways, now that you know about my childhood bubblegum ice cream e eating habits, don't you feel much more enlightened? Um, <laughs> anyways, so just looking here at at, at what Beelzebub is saying, I, you know, it's, it's it's pretty on point. Like, I, I think that's really... The, the, your your emotions aren't physical by nature. You evoke, conjure, and command them into existence. Greater banishing ritual of I'm in a crappy mood. Um, but it, it's interesting, like, because, I mean, I've done a lot of trauma healing. And, like, one of the questions, like, where does that trauma live in your body? Like, when you recall something. Aha, this is explaining something. Uh, a... And sometimes in the middle of the night, I, I'm known for making weird Facebook posts of stuff like this. So, but um, I think this relates to that. Let me find it on my phone. Um, because it's like, where does tra like the experience of trauma and, and where does that live in your body? It's it's not necessarily like, oh, I fell down the stairs and broke my ankle. So now when I look at the stairs, I feel uh, pain in my ankle. It's more of like. Where does your relationship trauma live? Mine lives in my hips and my and my like 
lower torso. Um, so, do, 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 do. Okay, this is what I wrote. Trauma consciousness gives you a portal to time travel, to the exact moment of the traumatic incident, as if you were frozen in time, in that moment, feeling all the pain and emotions. The memories are not just a thought, it's everything, everywhere, all at once, bombarding you with sensation after sensation, sliding down the multiverse of neural pathways. So I feel like that kind of relates a little bit to what Beelzebub was talking about, this emotional pestilence, because... You know, it's kind of like you look at, you know, the world at hand and, you know, all of our relationships with the friendships, romantic relationships, partnerships, business, community, family, friends, whatever, like how much of it is ruled by emotion and by how you feel about something. And it's hard, like, it's hard to rise above it. Like, I, I have, a, there's things I struggle with, um, you know, and I talk about that kind of openly on the channel. Um, but it's interesting to think about manifesting your pain, like, in a way, like, you would evoke Beelzebub. You're evoking your, your feelings and your emotions and, and causing yourself physical pain inside you because I know for me like when I feel anxiety like it feels like the only way I've, I've been able to describe it is like it's like having an internal coffee pot that's like you left on and it's like bah, 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 you know it's just percolating over and you know or the pot of tea on the stove that's bubbling everywhere and it's whistling and you know when when you have feelings like that they be they become physical because I can't just say here look at anger this is what anger looks like but you know it, it's it's interesting to think about that concept especially as we we look at this in terms of our not only our personal lives but our magical practices is the greater thing is like the power of manifestation of our emotions or our intentions so what you're seeing a lot of in, you know, magical terms is a, the power of intention, you know, and that's often emotionally driven, you know, I've never emotionlessly hexed someone, you know, it's kind of like, there's some anger and some, some bad blood behind that. If I, if I'm going to go um, as far as to do something baneful you know, or whether you're, or if you're doing a love spell, well, obviously you have feelings of love and craving and human connection. Sometimes it teeters into um, less great, you know, categories of, you know, obsession or addiction, um, things like that. So, um, yeah. So thinking about emotional pestilence and having, greater control over our emotions is you know you can you can do it to not cause yourself physical pain but you can do it and that be part of your magic like one of the things i've done i sort of reverse engineered um some uh reiki practices and energy healing to what i call you know sort of a transference kind of like pain transference like I'm not going to, you know, death curse anyone really, because I mean, unless you've done something worth that, which most people haven't, although a sidebar on the people who will death curse you if you, if just because they don't like you or, you know, they're butthurt about something, I would steer clear of those types of people because really they're kind of not well spiritually or humanly. Um, yeah. And then you get caught up in curse wars and suddenly, you know, it's just, it's stupid. And <laughs> so what I do is like a, a pain displacement thing, especially because I have chronic pain. Um, maybe not the most light, light workery thing of me to do with it. But, um, you know, what I will do is kind of just take that take that physical pain and sort of push it out of my body and external if it happens to hit someone who I particularly don't like and they have a sore back, oops. But, you know, you can send that energy out in the universe, ground it down into the earth, have it go wherever it needs to go. 
Um, but again, it's learning to work with our emotions in magic, in our practices, and also how we live our lives. We're very ruled by our emotions and our feelings and stuff like that. So, but we can use these beneficially in manifesting our intentions. Um, we're good at, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of, I think we practice a lot of magic without knowing it just by the power of our emotions. Um, you know, you can be mad enough at someone, never do anything physically to them, never do anything, you know, magically to them. And then, oops, they've got the, and then and everything has gone wrong in their life suddenly. And you're like, well, maybe that's just because everyone hates you. <laughs> and you're, you're drawing in that emotion too. Like, yeah, but anyways, it's also, again, another late night for Jen, queen of insomnia. So I just wanted to chit chat and give you some of the messages from Beelzebub and some stuff to think about. Um I'm going to try to do more videos like this because they seem to, uh, I think people enjoy them. Um, and boy, how do you have the spirits been noisy lately? Um, I'm trying to get everything down. Because <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of these, unless it's a message that's very personal and specific to me and something that's going on in my life. Um, they're usually more broader general messages about something, you know, whether it's magically, something stuff that's just kind of human crap and what's going on in our world today so I'm, I'm more than happy to share those uh what are they called messages <laughs> anyways i'm going to desperately attempt to try to sleep before 8 a.m fingers crossed but who knows i might make 10 more videos after this because love y'all